Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good to be with you on this Monday morning. Hope and pray that everybody had a good Sunday yesterday. You heard from the Lord that you're encouraged and uh, that you are primed and looking forward to this week ahead, whatever it may entail for you. We had a good day. Thank you for your prayers for us. Brother Michael, good morning. I would have thought you would have been busy doing other things. <laughs> Good to see you. Tracy, good morning. All right, let's crack on. I've got to get into it this morning. I've got to take Tracy a little bit earlier to dialysis. Acts chapter 7 this morning. Acts chapter 7. I want to read, I want to read one verse to start with, Carol. Good morning. And I want to look at some other verses around it beforehand. Jean, good morning to you. Acts chapter 7, verse 17. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. I want to talk to you this morning on this thought. It's just around the corner. Don't give up. It's just around the corner. Don't give up. It's easy to quit. Yes, I know. Here's another devotion. Here's another message on don't quit, don't give up. But it's easy to quit. It's easy to give up. Easier to quit, easier to give up than what it is to keep going sometimes. Okay? Um, made easier by difficult days, made easier by hopeless situations, perhaps even made easier by doubt and unbelief. So it's easy to quit. It's easy to give up. And what I'm talking about, it's easy to give up, Lucy, good morning. It's easy to give up on the promises. Now, you've got to understand something. Promises to God are very important. When God promises something, it's his word. When we doubt his promise or when we give up, we're giving up on God. We're giving up on his nature. We're, we're saying that the very essence, the very personage, 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 <laughs> I'm just try, trying to be too fancy early in the morning. I still got the remnants of yesterday's headache. Uh, it, it, we're giving up on the nature of God. Okay. God never gives up on us. You know, God God is always working on us. God God has investment in us, okay? And part of that is the promises that he's given us. And I'm grateful for the promises of God, all right? Now, I'm going to come back to Acts 7 in a minute, but I want to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, all right? I want to remind you this morning on the importance of the promises of God in your life. It's, the, it's just around the corner. And when you say that something is just around the corner, Brother Duncan, good morning. When you say that something is just around the corner, it's close, okay? That's why you don't give up. Yet so many Christians give up just before the promise comes to pass, okay? Promises are important to God. All right, because that's who he is. He, he, he speaks something, it's going to happen. All right. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. The way that, Lindsay, good morning, the way that you're going to know and understand and appreciate all the things that God is giving us pertaining to life and godliness is by us growing in the knowledge of him, knowing more about him. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Not just promises, not just great promises, exceeding great and precious promises. I mean, I don't think Peter, under the inspiration of the Spirit, could express himself more so than using the words exceeding great and precious promises. I love the fact that they are not just precious, they're exceeding great. You see, the promises to us are precious, but they're more precious to God because it is God who has given the promise. I want to encourage you that whatever promise you are clinging to today, it's just around the corner. Don't give up. Don't quit. Okay? So he's given us uh, exceeding by his divine power. So when it says whereby, it's talking about through his divine power, he's given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these 
the promises, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Okay, so the thought here is he's given us exceeding great and precious promises. All right, that's important to understand that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 for a minute. Hebrews 6. God made promise when we read in Acts chapter 7, 17, God made promise to Abraham, right? Uh, verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Okay, After he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. This is what you need. You need to patiently endure. And that's very important when we go back to Acts chapter 7. I want you to tuck in your memory bank, those two words, patiently endure, all right? It's almost like a double meaning because patience, is, as I've been saying, is endurance in the midst of adversity. Patiently endure. Endure, is, is, it's, like a, it's like a double whammy that he's trying to patiently endure. Uh, verse number, um, verse 17, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, immutability, the unchangingness of his counsel, confirmed by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled to ref for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. It, the two immutable, two unchangeable things. Uh, God and his word, two unchangeable things, both connected together, that God was trying to, re is, he is trying to re relay to us the importance of the promises that he makes. His promises will always come to pass. But the key is this, is that if you start doubting and entering into unbelief, at worst, the promise won't be fulfilled. At best, it will be delayed. Okay. You don't want to. You, you, you don't want. You don't want to not have the promise come to pass. God, God's promise will come to pass because what He says always come to pass. But folks, let me tell you, we're in the way sometimes because we find it just so easy to quit and give up. All right. Now, let's go back to Acts 7. As you're going back to Acts 7, if you're following along the Bible, Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 1.20, that all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. All of them. All the promises. Now, I've shared before that Paul, when writing to churches, would often give to New Testament churches Old Testament promises. He would refer them back to what God had said in the Old Testament. So, folks... Never let anyone say to you that the promises of the Old Testament are not for us today when the Apostle Paul wrote to churches and would use Old Testament promises for a New Testament church. That's why he said all the promises in him are yea and amen. So be it, right? So easy to quit. Don't give up. It's just around the corner. Don't give up. Why is it easy? Well, just here in Acts chapter 7, the reason why it's easy to give up if we look at it, look at what it says here. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, verse 18, another king arose, which knew not Joseph. Now, we were in Exodus not that long ago, and we were looking at, oh, not in Genesis, sorry, and then we got to Exodus chapter 1, where this is referenced. Stephen's preaching now and reminding the Jewish people what was taking place. It was a great message. They didn't love it. They killed him for it. Um, so he's saying that there arose a king which knew not Joseph. That's so, so important, not just for them, but even for us. Because of who Joseph pictures, he's a type of Christ. Uh, you know, there arose a king, there arose a king who thought it great to be the first king to march in the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras. There arose a king who was all for the minority groups. There arose a king who couldn't care less about Christianity, but was more important in kowtowing to all those other groups. You know who I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. Our beloved king. Uh, and so therefore, we live in a day where we have members of parliament, prime ministers, 
and even presidents that know not Joseph. They don't know the Lord Jesus at all. No, I'm not saying that they're saved or not. They, they just have no... There was a day where people would rise up that had some sort of um, Christian either upbringing or, you know, they went to Sunday school, whatever it is they were. You think about, for example, uh, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill would often reference God and so on. So that was what they did. Whether he was saved or not, I don't know. Okay, but now we've got a generation of leaders that just don't know, don't care, whatever. In that itself, the days become difficult. Okay, so what we have now is we have another king that that arose, which knew not Joseph. Verse 19, the same, this king dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. All right, so they tried to do away with the, the next generation. Sound familiar? In which time? So during this time, Moses was born. Okay, now let me just stop there. So the reason why this morning is, is it's just around the corner. Don't give up. Because if you notice, when the time of the promise drew nigh, the people of God, the Hebrews were growing in multitude. It was looking really good. Man, we're becoming strong in number. We're multiplying. However, a leader arose that didn't know the past, didn't know Joseph, and he started to be very unpleasant and difficult. And this is why it's easy to give up, because we view the conditions of which we are a part of and we judge whether God's promises will come to pass by the experience. You know, uh, God promised me this, but it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. Folks, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If God has promised, the, the power of the promise is this is that the promise comes to pass despite what's happening in the world. Okay, The promise comes to pass despite what's happening in the world. So don't view... See, many, many will judge God's promises based on what they're going through. Well, it's just looking bad. And <laughs> no doubt that it was looking... It was not just looking bad here. It was bad to the point where they were killing all the next generation. They didn't want another generation rising up, uh, and so they were slaughtering all the young ones. Okay, Folks, that's been going on in society for a long, long time. When it comes to abortion, Planned Parenthood, and all those things, even vaccinations and so on and so forth. Now, uh, all of those things are very dangerous. Okay, and so therefore, for those of us who stand up and say, no, we don't want to be a part of that, that's when, that's when things get tough. However, that's when things can be very good, all right? Because God manifests not just his promises, but his power in the difficult times. The days here became very desperate, okay? But use Use the desperation as a driving force in your life. Don't use the days of desperation to drive you away, right, and give up. Use the days of desperation to drive you forward. Use it, take the negative and turn it into a positive. Take that, that if you please, that force, that negative force that, that is there, and use it to propel you and to keep going until you see the promise come to pass. Okay. Now, notice something in verse 19. The same, this is this king, this is, this is the Pharaoh, the same dealt subtly. Now, who does that remind you of? Well, the devil is someone who deals subtly, doesn't he? Okay. We see that all the way back in the garden in Genesis chapter 3. It is, it, is, it, is, it is his very nature to deal subtly. When you see the sub, when you see when you see the devil dealing subtly, you know it should be something that lets you know the promise is is coming soon. It's it's just around the corner. Because the devil does his best. The devil, the devil works his hardest to get you to doubt and unbelieve 
just before the promise comes. Because he knows if you can, if he can switch you off, if he can get you turned off, if he can get you angry and upset, and why bother? Why this? Why am I bothering? And he knows right. That person's not going to get see that promise come to pass. So he works his hardest. He deals subtly. It should be an indication for Christians. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we 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 do not apply the discerning of spirits. It's one of the spiritual gifts. Now, um, I think I believe that God gifts everyone individually. There's no doubt about that. However, God wants us to be discerning. And we ought to be discerning of the times. We ought to be discerning of the seasons. We ought to be discerning what's taken place in our governments, whether it's uh, whether it's the council elections that are happening here soon, or whether it's state election, or whether it's federal. It doesn't matter. We ought to be discerning of what's taking place. We ought to be able to discern the spirit behind what's taking place. And we discern that through the Spirit of God that dwells within us. So if we were discerning what's happening, we would realize, wow, things are really ramping up, man. Lord, I was believing you for this, and you know I needed this, and things are just getting worse and worse. And that doesn't mean it's not going to come to pass. In fact, it's the very opposite, because the worse the day gets, the sooner the promise is coming. Because you got two if you please, two supernatural uh, forces being coming together. You've got God and you've got Satan and, and we're here and there's stuff going on and God just expects us to hang on to him and believe him. Don't give up. Don't quit. It's just around the corner. The promise is coming. Oh, it's getting desperate. It's getting dark. It's getting awkward. It's getting whatever. Hey, yeah, okay. It's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. Notice verse 20, in which time? What time is that? Well, that's verse 19, when all these kids are being slaughtered. This is the time that Moses, who was the promised deliverer, was born. You see, promises are birthed in adversity. There's no birth that takes place naturally where there's no pain and suffering. I know it's unfortunate, ladies, you go through an awesome thing. I tell you, it's just amazing. Men, we got no idea. Let's be honest. Um, So there's no, there's no, listen, before life comes forth, there's the pain and the anguish. But Jesus said, when the, when the baby is born, there's joy and the pain and the suffering and the adversity and everything that has gone along with all of that has been forgotten because of the joy of the baby that's been born. And so what I'm trying to say, what is important here is that the promise was birthed during a time of desperation, despair, difficulty, darkness, however you want to term it, Moses was born. Now we understand, oh, we get that. It wasn't until 80 years later when he, when he delivered. But in God's economy, in God's mindset, notice verse 17, when the time of the promise drew nigh. The time with God, is, we, we, we have more of an issue with time than what God does, okay? But the principle, the, the lesson here is it's just around the corner. Don't give up. God's promise will come to pass. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, help us to stay in faith. Help us to keep believing. And we thank you for the power of your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate that. Have a great day in the Lord. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Until then, God bless. Goodbye for now.